Abnormal uterine bleeding is a very common problem that is handled by gynecologists on a daily basis. While menorrhagia used to be defined as blood loss of more than 80 milliliters per cycle, ACOG now defines it as patient perceived heavy bleeding. Clinically, if the patient complains of heavy or irregular bleeding that is troublesome, it needs to be addressed. There are a variety of treatment options available for women with excessive menstrual bleeding, ranging from hormones to a hysterectomy. It's estimated that just over 100,000 hysterectomies are performed each year to treat menorrhagia. However, as medical technology continues to improve, the need for surgical intervention will decrease. While the patient will ultimately choose between medical therapy, IUDs, ablations, or a hysterectomy, it is important to present all of the options. Endometrial ablation is a perfect option for many of these patients. My ablation of choice is Novisure because of its simplicity and effectiveness. The Novisure system consists of a disposable bipolar handheld device and a radio frequency controller. Novisure is the only impedance controlled endometrial ablation technology that provides a customized ablation in approximately 90 seconds, which also features a proactive safety system. The device features a three-dimensional bipolar electrode array, which controls the ablation through the scientific endpoint of tissue impedance. During the ablation, the proprietary vacuum system, known as the moisture transport system, pulls the uterine cavity into contact with the bipolar array, ensuring the complete removal of the endometrial lining. The moisture transport system also removes the byproducts of the procedure, which is steam and blood, enabling a controlled depth of ablation and allowing patients to feel minimal post-procedural cramping or nausea. Novisure is the only endometrial ablation system that does the following. It is customized to each patient's uterine cavity measurements, is not cycle dependent and does not require pretreatment. It does have a proactive safety feature, has treated over one million women, Careful selection of patients is essential when planning procedures in the office. Two important pre-ablation tests which should be performed are an endometrial biopsy and pelvic ultrasound. I find that endometrial biopsies for women over the age of 35 are very important in ruling out pre-malignant, malignant, and active uterine infections. Pelvic ultrasounds are essential to rule out uterine abnormalities such as uterine septums, bicornuate uteruses, or large cavity distorting submucosal fibroids, in which case ablations are unsuitable. One of the great things that I find about Novisure is that it is not cycle dependent and it can be done at any time. Uh, with my patient, we were able to get her in the office very quickly. In fact, she only walked into my office two weeks ago and wanted the Novisure done as soon as possible. You will see how easy this procedure is because along with the prep time, the actual Novisure ablation will be shown in almost real time. Doing okay? I'm just numbing up the top here, okay? Add just a little bit. So I put the tenaculum on. Use a single tooth tenaculum. And I just kind of shouldn't feel much of this. And I kind of take a deep breath in. And I actually inject all 10 cc's and I keep trying to go deep. Good job. Okay, and then another 10 cc's. Okay, we're one down. And I started at about the 10 o'clock region. Now I'm going at about one o'clock. Keep breathing, good job. And I just keep advancing it, always making sure that I haven't hit a vessel. Perfect. We're halfway there. It'll start setting up here so she won't feel um, 
the next two as much. I always ask if they've had dental work, if they've ever had a problem with the dentist, just so I have an idea, because I, there have been patients that have had allergies that you don't really realize. Okay. Feeling it at all? Not too bad. Not too bad? Good. I'll start dilating your cervix, okay? I've got kind of a setup here. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. I'm comfortable with these double-sided dilators and um, just my office, we didn't have anything larger than a 31 French. Now what I'm gonna do is sound the uterus, sure sound. I always, this is locked, I always like to unlock it and test it beforehand, make sure I know how it slides. Five and a half is what I've got. We're gonna look inside here. But I'm looking around and nothing abnormal there. A lot of tissue, and you're gonna see the big difference there. But otherwise, nothing. Nothing abnormal. Looks good. will take the the end. Maintain a slight traction on the tenaculum to minimize the angle of the uterus. Slide the cervical collar all the way back. While holding the front handle, gently insert the device transcervically in line with the axis of the uterus until the distal tip reaches the fundus. Slowly squeeze the handles without locking in the device up to the point of increased resistance while maintaining very light pressure at the fundus. Continue to slowly squeeze the handles together while gently moving the device about a half centimeter to and from the fundus. And rotate 45 degrees left and right until the handles lock. Once locked, gently move the device using anterior, posterior, and lateral movements to the left and right. To complete placement, slightly pull back the device until the width dial reading reduces by approximately 0.2 to 0.5 centimeters. Then advance towards the fundus with very slight forward pressure. The width dial should read greater than or equal to the previous measurement and should always read greater than 2.5 centimeters. She's gonna hit the arrow, which lights up the enable key. Now, Melissa, this is where you're gonna hear the, the constant beeping, so then you're gonna hear suction, and that's going to make a whining sound. And it's assessing the cavity. There's the vacuum. Now, what you may feel is a little cramping. Anything? I can feel movement. Movement, but no cramping? No. Good. And we're keeping time as this is going. Um, she's doing great, so I won't even focus on the amount of time, but in a patient, I'll usually say, okay, we, you know, it's slowing down, sounding good, oh, but awful. you're doing great. She's not feeling a thing. You know I had faith in you too. <laughs> <laughs> and with the, the amount of tissue I kind of saw in there, I would expect this probably to go about 90 to 120 seconds. One minute, 60 seconds, but you don't feel a thing. Yeah, there it is. You can hear it underneath, it's starting to die.
still got the full 120. inside here. See how it's changed to white? All that fluffy tissue, see there? Mm -hmm. Look at that. Look at that. Was it tolerable? There was absolutely no pain. Would you do yeah. it again? Oh, definitely. Okay.